Hi everyone, how are you? I taught myself to be a software developer from scratch and now I am working full-time remotely from Bali. Four years ago I didn't know a thing about programming, but since then I learned a lot and gained some experience working in three different companies. So I thought today I could share my experience with you from where I first started to where I am now in my career. Let's go! I graduated from college with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. I didn't know how to program anything at all at the time. All I knew was some structural engineering, how types of concrete differ one from another, or how to draw in AutoCAD. I spent four years at university and wasn't sure I really wanted to be a civil engineer. I mean, I liked the idea of designing buildings, but the overall feel of the industry didn't appear very tempting to me. The pay, flexibility, the pace of career growth and opportunities abroad are not really great for a civil engineer from Russia. During my last year of studies, I started to search for another profession with the potential to earn more money. I thought about becoming a petroleum engineer. My plan was get an oil and gas degree, then find a job in an international oil and gas company. You don't get a great pay if you work in Russia, but you get paid much better if you get employed internationally. So it was decided. I was lucky. My home university just started a new joint degree in mechanical and petroleum engineering. The program was initiated by one of the leading oil and gas companies in Russia. And wow, it seemed like they were going to employ all of its program's graduates. I would get at least a good job experience, I thought. The entry exam was quite simple, so I got into the program without much effort. The learning was hard though. All in all, I was on my way to becoming a petroleum engineer. But things started to change within the first months of my studies. Every student had to participate in a research project and choose from a number of topics provided. Some topics didn't look interesting for me, while other topics required programming skills. Almost nobody from my class knew how to write code, so I thought we were all in the same shoes and I picked a project that sounded interesting to me, but required Python skills. I decided to learn it. How? Well, let me tell you that. Do you like learning new things? If yes, you might as well hit the very like button at the bottom of that video and help YouTube algorithm do its job. Thank you. Python. Python is one of the most popular and widely used programming languages today. The very first thing I did was learning the basics of syntax of the language. How to write numbers and strings, combine them in lists and other data types, and make some basic operations on them. A good place to start was codecademy.com. They offered a free course on Python at the time. It was super basic, like learning from 0 to 1% only, but I liked the interactivity of the lessons. I quickly realized that learning Python was more about practice and less about reading books, very unlike my civil or petroleum engineering studies. I enjoyed writing code from the very beginning. It was somehow satisfying to me to be able to create working programs from scratch that did something useful. I spent about six months practicing my basic Python skills in the research project. I learned how to plot charts with Python, how to read and write data from files on my computer, I learned how to create a basic user interface and how to use the Git version control system. The version control system helps programmers organize their code in a reliable and easy access manner. If you use Git, well, you have all versions of your code at any time and all the history of all changes you made to your code base. I also learned that the place where I can solve most of my problems is stackoverflow.com. That's probably number one website where programmers go when they need a solution to their problem or if something goes wrong in their code and they don't know how to solve it. My first job experience. At the end of the first year of masters, I got my first job. Woohoo! The sponsor oil company really did employ students of their program, including me. I started working part-time and worked there throughout the second year of my master's studies. By coincidence, I got involved in the Python project there as well. Some other positions my classmates too did not require any programming, but required more conventional petroleum engineering skills, a certain type of software for geology and modeling. But for me, it was a different case. I was lucky I got a Python project again. The team I joined was working on a web application for designing networks of pipes for oil fields. The application was designed for the company's engineers, and it was very exciting for me to work on a project like that. The idea that professionals in my company will be using our app in their work inspired me. I felt the purpose and real-life benefits my work brings to people. My job was 100% programming in Python, even though I was working in an oil and gas company. I was learning a lot from my teammates, 
However, the learning curve was very steep. There are lots of tools in the IT world that programmers use in their work. Knowing only the basics of language syntax does not make you a career in programming. Being able to use the libraries that are built on the top of the language, working with databases, building user interfaces, learning how to test your code, how to build and deliver your application to the server, all that is crucial to know. And it was all new for me. These are the technologies we used in that project. Python 3.4 Flask framework for web server, MySQL database, SQL Alchemy and Alembic for handling the data in the database, Hext.js as front-end library, and GitLab for continuous integration and delivery. So many things to learn. I graduated and was ready to work full-time now, but the company didn't want to pay me as much as I asked them. The timing wasn't really good for oil companies. The price of oil was very low. The career prospects were not looking as promising as I have imagined, and I started looking for a full-time job as a Python developer instead. I was stunned by the amount of vacancies out there for Python developers in absolutely different kinds of projects and businesses. HR managers started spamming me. I received four interview invitations within the first 24 hours I published my CV online. Wow, that is so different to oil and gas industry, I thought. Having only one year of experience, I was very nervous going to the interviews, but I did them one after another. Some of the interviews went very bad. I felt I was a total failure. Other interviews went okay, and overall I received a number of job offers within only two weeks of doing the interviews. They offered me double the pay that I was offered in the oil company, and obviously I didn't really hesitate for long, um, and after a couple of weeks I was already working, not as a petroleum engineer, but as a Python developer in a 100% IT company. I spent two years working at that company in an automotive project for German car makers. You probably know some of them, so we were working on software that helps them make their cars better. Nearly all of my team was located in Germany, and even though I was working from the office in Russia, it really felt a lot like a remote job. Python was my main programming language at work, and I was gradually becoming better and better at it. I took some courses online, read some books, and learned about other related technologies. But the main thing was a lot of practice. After two years, I felt I had learned what I could at that job, and started looking for a new opportunity. I was also dreaming about working remotely and being able to travel while working. What was driving me was the idea of spending a cold Russian winter in a sunny Southeast Asia. I went through a dozen of job interviews and eventually got an offer for a remote position. All as I dreamed about. I still work at that company at the time of making this video. The job is quite challenging and the learning curve is as steep as I've ever had. After several months of working from my home in St. Petersburg, I bought a ticket and flew myself to Bali, Indonesia, where I am now. I've been living here for almost three months and I really enjoy it. Let me sum this up. I didn't actually plan to become a Python developer from the very beginning. I first wanted to be a civil engineer and then I wanted to be a petroleum engineer. But in reality what I really wanted was to have a flexible job that pays well enough and allows working from anywhere. It turned out that programming matched my desires very well. And on the top of that, I find programming satisfying and fulfilling, as you alone can build something useful from scratch. You clearly don't need a software engineering degree in order to build a career in programming. And you don't even have to be proficient in math or science or anything. All you need to become a software developer is the ability to concentrate on one thing, have dedication and patience. I learned it, and you can learn it too. I spent four years to go from zero to working remotely full-time as Python developer. Part of it was my dedication and hard work, and another part was just pure luck. That was my personal experience, I hope some of you find it helpful. I plan to release more videos on related topics, so please subscribe if you want to stay tuned. Take good care of yourself and your family, and see you next time. Bye!